Hello guys, so for today's video, I will be discussing to you the easiest way to understand the basic refrigeration system. After this video, you will have a very clear understanding with the proper operation of your air condition, fridge, or chiller. So let's begin. There are four major components you will find in refrigeration system, and these are the compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and last, the evaporator. Please take note that the refrigeration system is a closed loop system, which means that the refrigerant is contained inside these components. And once you have a sudden drop in your pressures, it means that you have a leak in the system. The, the easiest way to understand refrigeration cycle is by dividing these components into four areas. So the pressures on your left side will all be low pressure and the ones on your right side will always be high pressure and then we will divide again the system with the state of refrigerant whether it is in liquid state or in vapor state the one on the top side will always be in liquid state and the one on the bottom side will always be in vapor state this is the simplest way to remember the status of your refrigerant in every part of the cycle, so better remember this figure. Let's start the refrigeration system in the suction line of the compressor. Since it is on the left side and bottom part of the figure, then the status of refrigerant will be in low pressure, low temperature, in vapor state. The refrigerant will be sucked in by the compressor and bring up the pressure. Please take note that compressor can only compress vapor state refrigerant and it is considered as the heart of the refrigeration cycle. On the discharge line, will go then to the condenser. Since the discharge line falls on the right side, which is high pressure, and bottom part the status of the refrigerant here is in vapor, so your refrigerant will be in high pressure, high temperature, vapor state. After which, it will pass to the condenser. The function of the condenser is to remove the heat from the refrigerant. And once the vapor cools down, then the vapor will turn into liquid, just like the cloud in the sky. Once it is cooled down, it turns vapor into rain. Normally, condenser has a motor fan to suck in the outside air and blow it to the condenser fins to cool down the refrigerant. That is why it is very important to place your condenser in a strategic location where there is a proper airflow. The ambient temperature should always be lower than the condenser temperature because it is the ambient temperature that will cool down the refrigerant inside your condenser. Then the refrigerant will be delivered to the expansion valve. In this area, since it falls on the right side, which is high pressure, and on the top of our figure, then it is in liquid state. So your vapor will be in high pressure, low temperature, liquid state. So the main function of the expansion valve is to reduce the pressure of the refrigerant. Its temperature will decrease to a level below its atmosphere. This liquid will then pump into the evaporator. So the expansion valve has this filler bulb which is connected to the outlet of the evaporator. This will send how much is the opening of your expansion valve. It will push a diaphragm inside so that it will regulate the orifice. And this will regulate how much refrigerant will flow onto your evaporator. So the status of refrigerant after the expansion valve, since it is on the left side, it will be a low pressure and a liquid state. 
So you have a low pressure, low temperature, liquid state of refrigerant in this area. Then lastly, it will pass to the evaporator. The function of the evaporator is to absorb the heat from your room. It will suck in the room air and it will pass through the evaporator coil. There will be a heat exchange between the room air and the evaporator fin temperature. This room air temperature is enough to reach the boiling point of the refrigerant inside. Hence, the liquid state of the refrigerant will evaporate and turn into vapor. Refrigerants has a low boiling point. Let's say for example the R134A which is now the most commonly used refrigerant. The boiling point of this R134A is negative 26.1 degrees Celsius. That is why if your room air is 30 degrees or even 25 degrees or even 18 degrees Celsius, the refrigerant inside the evaporator will still evaporate. So after that, the cycle will just continuously repeat its cycle. So this is just how easy to understand the state of your refrigerant in your refrigeration cycle. So remember this figure. So if you're planning to enter this kind of field, it is imperative that you should know the status of your refrigerant in every cycle of it so that it will be easy for you to understand and to analyze what is the problem in your refrigeration system. Like if you do not have proper condensation in your condenser, what will be the state of your refrigerant or if the compressor is actually compressing liquid. In industrial application of the refrigeration system, there are additional components which will give you a better monitoring on your refrigerant like the side glass and the filter dryer in which the filter dryer will actually filter this moisture and collect so that it will not go into the system. We also have the pressure transmitters and pressure switch which will protect the equipment from continuously running and better monitoring of the pressures. So we will be talking all these additional components on a separate video. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video and this is your Lucky Jake and see you.